Hit it. Oh! Sounds like a G86, Brian. GR86? GR86, whatever. That's not good from it or your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Texas Truck Channel. My name is Brian, and this is the beautiful Mazda CX-50. And as you know, if you're a regular listener or viewer of our show, Craig and I like to debate Mazdas a lot, and this is one we actually don't disagree on whatsoever. We think it's beautiful, and let's just get to the looks right away. Craig's favorite line, longer, lower, wider. That's what this has, it's got it sorted out. When you compare this to the CX-5, you've got more legroom in the rear. And that's part of that longer aspect. That's the only reason I'm bringing that up. That wheelbase is a pinch longer. The wheels are massive. They're 20 inch, and I honestly think they are a detriment in terms of the off-road aspect. But let's be honest, who this thing is for, it's perfect for the boulevard. It's got that covered. Now, looks all out of the way. Let's hop in the interior and see what Craig has to pick apart in there. Welcome to the interior of the Mazda CX-50. And uh, it's a good spot. Brian said lower, longer, lower and wider in the exterior, and that's, it helps out in here. It's low. It's hard to get things out of here. Look, when I'm at a drive through I can't, I can't get out of that thing, and I just hit things, and it's really frustrating. But that aside, this is a really good spot to be. Everyone that's been in this car with me that I've taken on a ride and driven anywhere, they love it. Like, oh, this is really nice. I like this. It's been everybody's favorite Mazda that I've given a ride in. There are a few things to pick apart, though. There's some stitching along this dash which looks good right now but it just doesn't look like it's going to hold up a long time i don't want to be too critical but that's a little bit of an issue the wireless phone charger it's it's hit and miss here are the good things though it's really comfortable and sorted just like all the other monsters everything's in the right spot everything works well and there's not a whole lot to complain about there it's a good spot to be i took it on a long trip had no fatigue with that, let's get into the shop and maybe we can talk about some my drive and get on the road and see what that actually does. Welcome to the under the hood portion of the all new 2022 Mazda CX-50. And by all new, I mean all new. New model, new assembly plant, all that fun stuff. But this is the tried and true Sky Active G 2.5 liter turbo, good for a 227 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. That's on regular. There's more if you use 91 octane. Numbers are down here somewhere, 250 and something. And it's paired to the wonderful six-speed transmission with, wait, wait, what are you doing in here? What are you doing in this segment? This, this is boring, we've done this. You, well, yeah, we have done this. We've done it like three other times. Right, two, five turbo, six-speed, yeah, all drive, yeah. blah, 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 yeah, blah, yeah, yeah. blah. Let's talk about the drive modes. That's, That's what I was trying to get here. to. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, so the My Drive, which is compared to that six-speed transmission, right. has, shows you three modes. Right, but there's a secret one. There's normal, sport, off-road, and the secret one? Tow mode. If you plug in a trailer to this hitch, it will then uh, pop up on the dash, but without a trailer hooked up, you never know it's there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Why did Toyota, or Toyota, whoa, this is they built, share an assembly plant, but it's next not, to a Toyota. It not a Toyota. Not a Toyota. Wow. Well, why did Mazda <laughs> go with just one off-road mode? Because usually all these off-road things, even Subarus, yep. have different versions of like mud, There's like sand, right. rock. Why just off-road? Because... And I'm, I'm going to basically pick from Dave Coleman himself, the lead engineer on this project for Mazda. He, anything you like from Mazda, he's probably been involved in. Oh, yeah. Um, he, they tested a lot of competitors, and they found that having 17 drive modes is appealing in the showroom floor, but not really effective in the real world. It's confusing. It's confusing. Yeah. Because you go up our hill test, for example. Is it's it, slippery rock. Is loose it, rock. Well, is it loose rock? Is it rock crawl? When it's raining, is it, is it, is it muddy? Is it just off-road? Right. So instead of making the vehicle only corral into these segments, that you that the surface might change while you're driving, you pick off-road mode and the car does the rest of it for you. There you go. That's basically it. And it uses I mean, the existing G-Vectoring control to really control wheel speed. That's the biggest deal. The biggest thing you're trying to do is lock a wheel when it's in the air. That's it. And the other thing they do as well is they will also loosen the torque converter so that you get a little more rev and a little more linearity with your, your inputs. And then also um, the gearing will, uh, the shift patterns will change a little bit. Man, I kind of wish Mazda made a real off-roader. Can you imagine smart. how intuitive that would be? Yeah. And then the other trick too is they haven't sacrificed the off-road or the on-road ability to meet the off-road because they're very realistic and that the buyer of this car is probably going to drive several hundred miles mm -hmm. to the region, 10 to 30 miles on twisty mountain roads where it should be fun. This does that very well. And then probably five to 10 miles of dirt, if which that. this will also do that right. as well. So exactly. with that, Brian, let's check these modes out on the road, let's, first we're gonna do sport because we need a zero to 60. Zero to 60, gotta do that. And we're gonna do a hill test this, despite this little thing we, down here. We've got, really we've got a plan for that. Yeah. All right, Brian. 
enough shop talk that there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. But my, we're on the pavement, my drive, we got sport mode, hit it, let's see what let's it does. Let's do it, build the boost. Okay, all right. There we go. It's a hot day. It's a hot day. I'm shifting early on purpose. It's 107. 50 and 60 miles an hour. Then a little under eight. Yeah, 7.9 seconds. Yeah, and look, we tried it a few times off camera with one driver, not two. Um, and again, we test on the street and in the heat. Yes. It is what it is. In the winter, we'll do it. In the snow, it'll be cold. Same deal. And you may shave a half second to a full second. Who knows? I think so, full second on this yeah. thing. Look, we've driven this motor before. We've already talked about it torque is everywhere yep i think we should talk about how it drives and what the modes do for the driver mm -hmm. so it drives very well the downside to me is that the 20 inch wheels are really impeding some of the pothole uh avoidance yeah the upside is is that there's not a lot of sidewall to lean into so when you turn in yeah it's pretty immediate mm -hmm. um i will say the steering is awfully heavy very heavy for uh e-pass for an e-pass yeah. yeah but it has more feedback than most do on center. It's not numb on center. I want to give it credit for that. That is true. But to that heavy part, I mean, the only steering I've driven of new cars lately is a Nissan Frontier, and it's right. actually hydraulic. It, that's how heavy this is. That, it's not yes. that bad, but it, it's closer to that than anything yes. else. Yes. And the beauty of an E-Pass, an electronic power steering system, is that at parking lot speeds, it's very light. Well, this is not doing that. Right. I kind of wish it, some of the uh, drive modes would apply to that common sense. Right. So I want to get into a little bit uh, what Dave Coleman said about this in the drive mm -hmm. modes, and that's the one of the chief engineers from Mazda. He's behind a lot of our favorite yep. products, Miata in particular. Mm -hmm. And he made a great point about how drive modes need to make the driver better at driving in their environment, not get in the way of what the operation is. And that is why Mazda wins a lot yeah. of points with a lot of oh, journalists. Absolutely. Well, us included, especially us. And, and one of the things I want to get at is that it does just that. Yes. So my inputs. I don't have to change my inputs because of the mode I'm in. The car just adapts better to the environment I've told it that I'm in. It's completely opposite of what <clears throat> Toyota would do. In <laughs> right. That you, right. This is how you do it, and you cannot do it any other way, and you better follow the sequence. Exactly. Whereas Mazda's like, we want you to have fun driving this car. Right. So we're going to put some things in there that, yeah, the computer's going to be doing some things, whether it's torque vectoring or some other things. Right. But it's not going to interfere. It's going to help you do better. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly it. And yeah. one of the things this, this does is that whether you're in sport mode or normal or off-road mode, your inputs should be the same. So that means that you as a driver can stay linear and the car will adapt to you. And the only real difference that sport mode does here is holding gears and throttle mapping is a little bit sharper. That's what you want. That's it. So yeah. it's not getting all crazy on you when you're in sport mode. Speaking of holding gears, I want you to talk about the six speed traditional automatic okay. with a torque converter. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. And look, this is not a gem of an automatic. No. It's not the fastest shifting, but you know, it's mm -hmm. really smooth. It never hiccups ever. It, it makes never sense. has a problem. It's not complicated. Exactly. And you know what? There's no CVT nonsense here. Mm -mm. And in terms of getting traction to the dirt, this will be better than your Subaru Outback. Ooh. Not to trigger anyone here, Ooh. but that is real. We've driven the CVTs in our experience. You can get it to you a, a gearing problem where it just can't get the power yeah. out. Yeah. And this will not have that problem. Yeah, a traditional six speed doesn't have that problem. So. so the thing the Subaru is better at probably is approach angle. So I think it's best that we go to our hill craig and we try the off-road mode and see if that makes any difference. Let's do it. Let's go. All right, so here we go. We're uh, gonna take the uh, CX-50 up the hill. But uh, before we get to that, this thing is rutted out really bad. So I want you to see this here. You can see kind of right here is where we really get the back wheel stuck and up there is where the top really is starting to rut out really good right in there. So it's all about approach angle. We'll see how it does. All right, Craig, are we ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm going to put it in off-road mode. All right, so tell me about my drive. What does my drive do for us? So what it does here is it, what it will do is it is doing a lot of um, power delivery front and back. And so it's more in tune with wheel spin. So in sport mode, there's more front tire spin than there is in off-road mode. In off-road mode, it's actually more hyperactive to send the power to the back. And then also, much like a table with four legs with one leg off in a pothole, if we do get a wheel in the air, which we probably won't on the surface, it would then lock that wheel in the air fully with its brakes and send the power everywhere else. So but there's only, there's only one mode. There's only one mode, and that's, again, back to Coleman's quote of let the car adapt around the environment for you. So my input should be the same. 
So again, we're designed to get down a trail for a couple miles. Right. And my drive is going to kick in here. We'll see. This is more a test of approach angle, breakover angles, and all that. And, and honestly, so. the, the approach angle, I just, I, my bet right now is we have no chance of getting up this this final step. But I bet we get further than a lot of other vehicles do going up to it. All right. And if that doesn't work, we have another choice. All right. All right, here we go. He's coming up. And it's not gonna be all about approach, and that chin is not gonna work. You can see no slippage though with the wheels. It is the my drive is working well, um, but it is getting close to the edge. And so the problem there, of course, is going to be the approach. If it had a bigger lift or whatever we're gonna do the bypass here and see if that works well, we some wheels lifted. this is also a little bit of a tire situation it's still gonna get farther up but it's walking it's a little bit of trouble there so we're gonna do a little bypass here Walk with this pretty well. Good. Really, no problem at all. But my drive works. All right, Brian. So we had to take the crossover bypass. We but, did, uh, but much to Miles's point, you're going to spend 200 miles driving to the region, 20 miles on twisty mountain roads, and probably two miles on dirt to get to the campsite. There's always a bypass for the hardest obstacle. We just did that. And, you know, and as all cars with this hill test, right. if we'd have had clearance and tires, this thing would have made it to my drive, no problem. <clears throat> my drive did great. Yeah. We actually got two wheels in the air there and actually forced a couple feet more out of it. I think we could have made that with the clearance. Agreed. No question. All right, Brian. It made it up the hill. It did. I was actually pretty impressed. So my drive off-road actually works. Absolutely. I want to point something out. I took a sideline. We've tried this before in other vehicles where you kind of get the right side of the vehicle mm -hmm. on a straight line and the left side of the, the ledge. Get it off camber on purpose. And I got two wheels in the air and yes. I felt it working. Oh, it's on camera. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was applying hard brake back here. This wheel is coming up and actually the car shifted to the side. It was doing work. If we had maybe some boulders we could stack, we would have made it up. Or any slightly aggressive tire like the new Nitto, you know, cross terrain tires, whatever they call them. I think, I think it's those more would help. Well, absolutely would help, but the nose is probably the biggest deal. The nose is the biggest thing. I yeah. wish there was some type of valence that could like fold up or something. Oh, yeah. Really promising. Yeah, but nice. then look, every campsite has a bypass trail. Yeah. No problem. Had no problem going up a trail that most cars would struggle with. All right, Brian. So this Mazda though, <clears throat> this is a, this is a good package. Absolutely. I think, I'm curious what you think. I think they're going to sell just a crap ton of these more than they're going to sell CX-30, CX-5, CX-9. Yes. They're going to sell this way more because I think this has got a broad appeal. I completely agree. And a lot of it, and a lot of the appeal to me is down to proportions. I think it's a really good looking package. Yeah. And then you get inside and you go, oh, the size is like really good. A lot of people get into models and go, oh, but it's tight. Like yeah. we big Americans don't understand the value of Japanese packaging. Same thing for European cars too. This doesn't suffer that problem. No. You can get full size adults in here and they go, oh, this is just nice. Absolutely. And that's where I like, I think we, oh, we keep talking about the outback of the RAV4. What's its competitor? Right, right, right. Right? I think I like this the most out of those three because I think it splits I agree. the difference of both of them. And the RAV4 is trying to be two SUV when it's really just a crossover. The Outback's right. a station wagon that looks funky and weird, all the cladding. Well, and the CVT is a problem there, too. And the CVT is a problem. Right. This is sporty, fun to drive, and it's comfortable. This mechanically works off-road. If yeah. you were to do that, if you were serious about that. Yeah. And it looks amazing. Yeah. Long, low, and wide. Now, I do want to say a couple things. Of all the models we've driven, Craig, this one seems to have some issues. Mm. Now, I don't want to make it sound like it's problematic, but it just feels like some of the fit and finish isn't quite ready. There's some build quality that's off. Yeah, it's not yeah. faulty. It's just like panel gaps don't exist on other models than they do here. Well, that kind of stuff. The panel gaps aren't even, and the that's hood what, doesn't line I mean. up, and yeah. there's a felt thing that's in the interior that's off, and there's some. Right. None of them would keep me from buying it, but these are things I would consider. Maybe year two will solve that because Mazda's known for yeah. excellent, excellent panel gap uh, settings. Yeah, they're one of the They'll best. They'll figure it out too. They really yeah, will. Absolutely. But just know first year, first production of a first vehicle. It's going to happen. It happens to all of them and it happened here. So absolutely all that covered. I like it. And, um, you brought up a question earlier. Is it going to cannibalize the CX five? Is it like, 
now that this is here, the CX-30 is here. Right. They already killed the CX-3 years ago. Right. Is the CX-5 next on the hit list? I feel like it probably is, because you've got the CX-60 coming out next. Which is going to be a little bit bigger than the CX-5. Well, no, it's going to be bigger than this. Well, but, it, yeah, but also it's going to be bigger than the CX-5. Oh, yeah, also. Well, th this optically is bigger than the CX-5, yeah. although it's not practically much bigger than the CX-5. It's just the lower roof line. I, I don't know. I've got a feeling that the CX-5 might, and that's the problem, is that it's their number one seller in the U.S. I'm a little bit nervous that they're risking that nameplate for this one. I... I understand, but I think the CX-5 and CX-9 are lo not long for this world, so okay. you're replaced with the CX-60 and CX-90. You know what? If, if this is what it's going to be, sign me up. So, yeah, that? I like those other cars, too. Yeah. With that, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Let us know if you have any questions, and we'll do our best to respond. Have a good one. Thanks for watching Brake Check. Texas Truck Channel. No, Brake Check. Texas Truck Channel. That's a car. No, it's an SUV. It fits on the Truck Channel. No, no, no. It's a car. It's a, it's a Brake Check on Texas Truck Channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Yeah.